Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Lunchtime with the Lord. Uh, this is Wednesday, and uh, we've made it to the midweek point of our work week anyway, Monday through Friday, and uh, midweek point, of course, of these devotions as we have uh, uh, journey through the book of First Thessalonians, and thank you for spending some moments, some time with us today. Today is Wednesday. That means tonight at our church, and uh, maybe even your church, if you go to a different church, is having midweek prayer meeting, Bible study, and our teens will be meeting, meeting as well tonight, as well as our elementary age kids. And so we invite you to be with us seven o'clock tonight. Uh, if you cannot be uh, with us, you can tune into this Facebook page or our YouTube channel and watch the adult Bible study this evening. So we invite you to be with us uh, tonight. And uh, as we continue through the book of First Thessalonians, uh, let me just review a little bit what we've been talking about. Um, as, it, as it is the case in many of the epistles that Paul was the human writer of, uh, Paul would often give us doctrine truth, spiritual truth, and then uh, tell us what we're to do because of that. He would go from doctrine to duty. This is what we're to do or what we're not to do because of this spiritual truth. And we've seen that evident through the book of 1 Thessalonians, but we've also seen it even in the chapter we're in, chapter number 5. And so we're in that uh, doing part, the, the, the obligation part, the, the duty of the Christian part of chapter number 5. In verse number 11 and verse number 12, we're going to pick it up and we're going to find uh, that this continues, this 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 trend, really through the remainder of this book and the remainder of this chapter. Verse number 11 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And so it's very easy to see the subject matter of verse number 11 is to edify one another, to comfort one another. To, and that word edify in the Greek literally means to build up. And it, it's it's the opposite of, of, of what happens so often in uh, between people. Uh, our humans are just uh, a sinful people that oftentimes and we do the opposite. We tear others down instead of build, building them up. And the body of believers, uh, remember this is written to a church. It's written to, written to a body of believers, a local church. And he's exhorting them as they comfort, come together, comfort one another and to edify, build each other up. And we'll find in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 25, I believe it is, where the Bible tells us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, uh, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. He said, as you come together, exhort one another, encourage one another. And I, as I read that being uh, comfort yourselves, wherefore comfort yourselves together, I thought about Job. Uh, we, we know the story of Job in the Old Testament, how uh, he had lost everything. He had uh, he lost his family, his children. He had lost his health. And uh, remember his three friends. The, the book has a long uh, uh, dialogue between uh, him and his three friends. I, I used friends uh, loosely. Um, and there's a scripture in there that uh, Job says, Ye miserable comforters are ye all. He, he tells them that you're, miser that you're, you're not comforting him. And oh, it fit what they were doing to Job and what they were saying to Job. Uh, but it, oh, believer, let's not allow that to be uh, something that would fit us uh, as we interact with other believers. We ought to exhort, we ought to build one another up, we encourage one another in the Lord. And verse number 12, uh, the Bible says, And we beseech you, brethren, uh, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So, I believe verse number 12 is easy to find the subject matter of what uh, Paul is admonishing us, beseeching us, he says, to do. And it has to do with those that labor among us and are over you in the Lord. And so there's a leadership aspect that's talked about in verse number 12, a leadership position in the church. And certainly uh, God has ordained men to take the, the office of the pastor uh, God has placed those men in those positions. It's a call upon their life. And uh, we understand that the, the head of the church is never a man. The head of the church is never a pastor. The head of the church is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. Uh, he's the great shepherd. Uh, but the under shepherd that God puts in position is the pastor. And Paul's exhorting Christians here uh, to, to know those in leadership, to know 
and th those that are over you in the Lord, to know them. Uh, that word know means to have perception. I wrote down what that word meant. That, know, that word know means to have perception, to, to not just know who they are, know their name, but to have perception about them. And there's three areas that uh, Paul exhorts Christians to know about those that have leadership uh, over them in the Lord. And the first one has to do with their work. He said, they labor among you. They labor among you. The word labor there is a, is a strong word. It means to labor to the point of exhaustion. And uh, certainly ministry can be like that. And he's saying those that are labor among you, know them in the area of their work, in the area of their laboring uh, in the ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ, for his glory. And to and, and the second area is, is, as I mentioned already, about their their authority really those those the uh, the phrase and are over you in the Lord now listen to me as a pastor uh, I understand uh, that sometimes it may be a little bit uh, awkward to talk about but God has ordained the office of the pastor um, to have respect for that office uh, for what God has set forth and designed for the church and um, and he says to to know them in this er that are over you. And so knowing God's ministers has to do with recognition of that, of this office of pastor and, uh, and what God has said and that, that, there are, that there are leaders and to, to help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, they're going to answer for it. I'm going to answer for it. How I have uh, led the church that God has allowed me to be the pastor of, we give a, we're going to give an account and as the Bible says, that they much the Bible says that they much they must give an account. I believe it's in the book of Hebrews. Let me find it real quick, um, so I don't misquote that. Uh, I believe it's Hebrews chapter number twelve, thirteen, chapter thirteen, chapter thirteen. Um, yes, here it is, uh, verse seventeen. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they must give an account. We must we have to give an account. Uh, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for it is unprofitable for you. Obey them, which have talks about this authority, talks about this leadership, and talks about they have to give an account. They have to stand before the Lord and give an account for how uh, they fulfilled the role of pastor that God had called them to. And so know their work, um, know their, their, their leadership, but also know also this area of their warning. Notice the verse, verse ends with this, and admonish you admonish you. That word admonish uh, literally means to give warning. It means that, um, uh, in fact, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, that same word is translated warn. And so there's times that the pastor has to warn uh, the body of believers that God has called them to shepherd. And they admonish them. They, they, uh, they encourage them to, uh, you know, to uh, to not as he we talked about yesterday to not be or maybe it was the day before yesterday to not be asleep spiritually to not be have be apathetic spiritually but be alert be a, be watchful be and be warned about things and so two things in verse number eleven and verse number twelve he exhorts us in verse eleven of course he want he he wants us to encourage one another verse twelve he talks about those that that have leadership over us that we know them that we know them that we have some perception about it. And uh, there's a lot of folks in this world that are that are in ministry, and I use that as uh, loosely, that word, min uh, word ministry loosely. They're in it for the wrong reasons. They're charlatans, they're hire hirelings. They're in it for their own uh, glory. And, uh, and so it's very important for the body of believers to know them, to know them, have perception, and know their work, uh, know, that they're, know their leadership. They've been placed over you, and then... Uh, know their warnings that God uh, allows them to give on His account uh, through His Word. Hey, I hope there's been encouragement to you today. Let's 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 build each other up. There's a lot of things that tears us down in this world, but let's be an encourage, encouragement to one another. We're exhorted to do that. Uh, uh, for uh, for believers, we're part of the same family. Let's exhort one another. Let's encourage one another. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day today. I hope to see you tonight, seven o'clock. Uh, Lord willing, we'll see you uh, for our Bible study. God bless you. If I don't see you tonight, uh, we'll see you tomorrow uh, with Thursday's edition with the Lesson of the Lord, Lord willing. And uh, if you could, like, share this post. Let's reach as many folks as we can with the Word of God. God bless you.